Hello everybody, it's Andrea and I'm here today with another book spotlight. This time we are book spotlighting a different person, a different film star, we're not looking at Marilyn today. Um, recently, or a few months ago, not that long ago, I spotlighted the book Harlow in Ho Hollywood. Um, you'll be able to find that if you go through some of my, uh, my channel lists. Um, if you want to have a look at that one, which is a big, gorgeous photo book on Jean Harlow. And somebody asked me if I would spotlight um, David Sten's biography on Jean Harlow Bombshell. Now, <clears throat> certainly that is not a problem. I love this book. I have two editions of Bombshell. I have the original hardback, which has been so red, as you can see the, the bindings coming apart from the, the middle. And I also have the paperback reissue, which I bought. And I'll tell you why I bought the, the reissue as well. Obviously, I wanted to replace the hardback because it was falling apart. But the paperback does have some different photographs in it. Now, the photo sections aren't uh, as good quality. They are printed just on the text page. But there are more photos. So, let's get you a few facts about David Sten's bombshell by just going in to the inside cover. And I actually bought this second hand, so I didn't buy this new. So this originally came out, this version was October 1993, and the paperback came out in August 2000. So David Sten wrote the highly acclaimed biography of Clara Bow, which I recently read, which is Running Wild. Absolutely fantastic book and writer. Now, David Sten has appeared on numerous numerous documentaries with regards to Jean Harlow. He's appeared on uh, Intimate Portrait was one of them. Um, the Biography Channel's one that was another one. Talking about Jean Harlow. He is a very good writer and he really gets to know all of his subjects really 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 well so while you may read something like Irving Shulman's book on Harlow which is all scandal and based on lies and things that he made up and he did David Sten has gone back to source he has spoken to people that knew her now of course Jean Harlow died in 1937 at the age of only 26 so even though she died very young most of her contemporaries if not all of her contemporaries are now deceased sadly um, but let's just have a quick look to see if it says who he spoke to in here. There must be some some yeah, interviews. Here we are. He spoke to, I mean, some of these people you'll recognise and some of them you won't. Um, but there are uh, well over a hundred names. Patsy Miller. Alfred Pagnano, Eugene Pagnano, those were her hairdressers. Uh, May Clark, JJ Cohn, Corusu Collins, Harry Edwards, Bill Edmondson, Ernestine Fishbourne, Eleanor Freed, Harry Friedenberg, Latrice Gilbert, Irene Harrison, Skip Hathaway, Julie Hayden, Gloria Holden, Eddie Lawrence, Fred Lee, Jada Leland. So these are people that knew Harlow when she was alive. And he tells her story the way it should be told, with respect and with dignity and without, I, I wanna say without sensationalism, but her life was sensational. Her life was a sensational story. Um, she was married three times and engaged to William Powell briefly. She died at the age of 26, having made, I don't know how many films, 30 or 40 films, loads of films. She was one of the biggest stars at MGM during the 1930s. She was, she had lots and lots of different images over the years. So she's the blonde bombshell, hence the name bombshell. Her hair was platinum blonde. That's where the, the term came from. Platinum Blonde was coined for Jean Harlow. She also then, because she had been bleaching her hair for so long and was having problems with her hair, started wearing wigs. Around the time of China Seas, 
in around 35 she started wearing wigs because her hair was thinning because of the chemicals used it wasn't an easy process like it is today to bleach your hair it's still not a nice process and it still can sting and it's still painful i know i've done it myself but back then it was even more painful so she would start wearing wigs and while her hair grew out nat to its natural sort of honey blonde colour, she would wear what was called a brownette wig. So when you see her in things like uh, Wife vs Secretary and Riff Raff um, and so on, those later books, look, the later books, later films, she had a more natural colour. And obviously uh, in the end by Saratoga, she was back to her normal hair colour, her natural colour. So if we just have a quick look at the picture here with her in personal property with Robert Taylor it she's still blonde but she's not platinum blonde she's sort of like a golden honey blonde and it suits her so much better she looks so so much softer and much younger because that old that look I'm just just rambling on about Jean Harlow and not the book aren't I okay so so but he tells all this information he tells how she um suffered with her hair among other things he tells us the reasons why she got kidney failure in the 1930s, why it was not diagnosed, how she got this condition that through the course of her short life developed and got worse and she made it worse herself because she was a heavy drinker. He tells us about the stories of her mother and her stepfather, Marino Bello, and how hard it was for her to deal with them. And this is why, one of the reasons why she drank a lot was because of the way her mother controlled her. And her mother, you know, mother did this and mother said that, and you always obeyed mother. Um, to the fact that she was always called the baby, but Mother Jean was always in charge no matter what he also dispels the myth of of christian science which was her mother's alleged religion being responsible for jean harlow's death it wasn't what happened was that from the day that jean collapsed on the set of saratoga she had medical attention her mother ensured that there were doctors and nurses present she was misdiagnosed by a doctor. It's tragic. It was awful. But even if he had diagnosed her correctly, she still would have died. They couldn't have saved her. There was nothing they could have done in 1937 to save her from what was killing her. He misdiagnosed her, the doctor, um, and they started giving her fluids which was the worst thing to do because her kidneys were failing. She had complete kidney failure. Her kidneys were shutting down. By the time, even, even by the time that she was diagnosed, mis incorrectly by Dr. Fishbell, it was too late to save Jean Harlow. There's nothing they could have done. Um, she used Christian science as an excuse because she didn't want Louis B. Mayer coming in and taking over. She didn't want that. She still wanted to be in control, but she always had a doctor there. Her daughter was rushed to Good Samaritan Hospital, where she died on June 11th. The reason Jean Harlow died was her kidneys failed. There was nothing at this point when it was diagnosed that could have been done to save her. That you've got to remember that in 1937, there were no antibiotics, there was no dialysis, and there were no transplants at all. There was nothing at all that could be done. Had it been diagnosed two or three years earlier, then the, her life could have been extended somewhat by a careful diet, not drinking, and looking after herself. It still wouldn't have saved her life. Until antibiotics and dialysis and kidney transplants came in, and they didn't come in for another decade or so. I mean, I'm not, I'd have to look it up, I don't know. There would have been nothing they could have done. She was doomed to die from the day she caught the disease. And I don't want to tell you too much because I want you to go out and buy this book. But from the day she caught the disease that started the kidneys to fail, which was a long time previously, Jean Harlow was doomed. Even, if, I mean, one of the things, and he does say about her, her last words were that um, her aunt said to her, Jean, you've got to pull through this. And Jean said, I don't want to. Even if she'd wanted to, and even if she'd had the energy to fight, she still wouldn't have made it. There's, there was nothing 
in those days that could have been done for Jean. Um, so everything you've heard about her being beaten by Paul Byrne and um, it being peroxide poisoning from her hair causing her kidneys to fail, it's all rubbish. This all stemmed back from when she was a young teenager. And David then tells you the true story and it is a very tragic story but it is so well written that you can't help go away but feeling very sad for the loss of this life of this beautiful young woman who at 26 had barely scratched the surface of what she could achieve but it's also a triumphant story because she came up from yes she was well off she was wealthy she was a socialite but she fought against everything because they didn't give her a decent part. She was just a body in a dress, a blonde hair. But she proved herself to be a brilliant comedian and a brilliant actress. She was not any kind of singer or dancer, but she could act comedy and she could act drama without any problems. She was a brilliant actress. Her films today still hold up. They may be slightly dated, especially, certainly some of them, excuse me, with some of their attitudes to, to men and, and women and their roles, but Jean's character was never one of those, I'm going to be your typical housewife. She was always the other woman or um, the good time girl, until we got later on and she got on to wife versus secretary, where she just plays this innocent secretary just doing her job and being accused of having an affair with her boss when she wasn't. And there's a wonderful line in there where she, where she says to uh, Clark Gable's uh, wife, who was Myrna Loy in that, that film, Myrna Loy is about to leave him because she assumes that Clark and Jean's character are having an affair and they're not. And Jean turns around to Myrna Loy's character and says, if, if you leave him now, he'll turn to the first woman who's who's there for him and we all know who that'll be and then Myrna Loy says yes I suppose and Jean just looks us dead in the face and says you're a fool for which I'm grateful and then walks away but that makes Myrna Loy realise that Clark it's Clark's character isn't having an affair with Harlow and that she can patch it up it's a fantastic film and you do wonder what happened to Whitey after that but this book is so well written, so um, you can still pick up the hardback from places like eBay and Amazon, or the paperback. Like I said, the paperback, the paper quality is not as quite as good, um, but you do have a lot more photographs in it. Again, although the quality of the photographs isn't brilliant, there, that's a lovely one. It is. Um, it's nice to see the the rarer photographs of her. Um, that weren't in the original book. So the pictures that were in there are, and then they've got some other ones, and they have a big section of just film photos at the back. So you've got here, Hold Your Man and Bombshell. Well, two films, I absolutely love those two films. And then the Girl from Missouri, which I love that as well. So you get lots and lots of different film stills, like Reckless and China Seas. So these are the extras at the back, so all these extra film photos. And it is worth it. There's also a filmography at the back. Um, with uh, basically telling you what the, her film titles were, whether or not they were silent or... Excuse me, um, uh, or talkies. There is a bibliography. Uh, there's a list of radio appearances and archives that use like um, places you went, newspapers and periodicals. Uh, so the bibliography has lots of different books by different authors about Hollywood in that time. So uh, Mary Astor, who, Mar uh, who Jean starred with, um, the, the original novel of Red Headed Woman by Catherine Brush. Uh, what else have we got in here? Marion Davis. From her contemporaries, Douglas Fairbanks Jr.'s, um, Latrice Gilbert, A Fountain with John Maxim, Dark Star, The Untold Story, The Meteorite Rise, Fall of the Legendary John Gilbert. These are people that Jean Harlow knew, socialised with, worked with. So he's gone back to source material and people who were actually there. And that's what makes a difference with this biography. 
David's then has gone back to the original people, the original material, and drawn on that and used that to write this book. Irvin Shulman just made it up. It was a load of fan magazine bump that he pulled together, uh, I think, and, and, and uh, sadly was able to sell. There's been a lot of books like that. There's, uh, the most recent one was David Brett's Fiasco, which I do have, and David Brett's book is just a rehash of everything that was in the Shulman book. So it's all absolute bollocks. We all know it is. It's been disproved time and time again. Yet for some reason he keeps writing it. He's not a nice person. He's not, a, I wouldn't even call him a writer because let me be honest, rats can write better than him. You put a typewriter, typewriter in front of an ape, it'll write a better biography of Gene Harlow than, than um, David Brett. But enough of that. We'll go on to him on another day when I talk about other books. <laughs> I'm sorry. I do get carried away. I don't see the point in writing salacious rubbish about these people. They were real people who had real families and uh, real people who cared for them. And Jean Harlow still has living relatives um, who care very much about her. So it hurts them when they read these lies and there's no need for it. I've rambled on for over 16 minutes about Jean Harlow and David Sten and how fantastic his book is. So I will, if I can find it, I will leave a link down below so you can um, go and purchase it if you want. If it's an Amazon link and it's a current book, I am an Amazon affiliate. So if you purchase it from that link, I may get a little bit of commission. Um, if it's a marketplace letter, I don't. But you know, I would just say, go and find it. You will be able to get it on eBay or Amazon, possibly Book Depository, Ava Books. Track it down, either the paperback or the hardback. It's a fantastic read. And I will see you all soon uh, with a, another a book spotlight on somebody. I don't know who, maybe, maybe Judy Garland. We haven't done a Judy Garland one yet, so you never know. So I hope you've enjoyed this. If you have, don't forget to share, like, comment, and subscribe. And I'll see you again soon. Bye, booktube.